Hello, everybody. My name is Kylie Smith, and today I'm going to be reading the first half of my book, which is a Time for Kids nonfiction reader called Young Adult Literature, Dystopian Worlds. All right, let's get started. Young Adult Literature, Dystopian Worlds by Kylie E. Smith. That's me. Here's our table of contents. Dystopia, utopia, huh-topia? What is a dystopia? It is a perfectly horrid society. Civilization's problems have taken over. Discord and unhappiness are common. Governments try to create perfect worlds, but sometimes something goes wrong. They end up with a deeply troubled societies. To paraphrase the great author Leo Tolstoy, each dystopian world is unique, yet the people are similarly unhappy. On the other side of the coin are utopias. These are perfect societies. The governments are strong and fair. People are treated equally. They are well cared for. Utopian societies produce happy, loving, caring people. Authors seem to have it backwards. Utopian societies include perfection, peace, and prosperity. These are ideal conditions. So why aren't authors writing more utopian books? Wouldn't it be more interesting to read about perfect worlds? Not really. Utopia, by definition, has no conflict. Without conflict, there is no story. Dystopian novels focus on one of the most engaging types of conflict. More often than not, they tell the story of a single person against forces in the outside world. Teenagers are noted for feeling that they face the world alone. Maybe that's why dystopian books are among the most popular novels for young adults. YAL, The Real Story. Dystopian novels are just one subgenre of young adult literature. So what is young adult literature or YAL? It is a genre that first became popular in the 1960s. The themes, settings, and characters are meant to connect with a teen audience. Dystopian novels are full of loss, violence, sickness, and death. Why do these dark themes appeal to young adults? Perhaps it's because, just like the characters in the books, young adults are discovering their places in the world ar around them and that can sometimes feel as isolating and scary as a dystopia. Conflict. All great stories have conflict. Without conflict, there is nothing to help build excitement and interest. interest. Dystopian stories are no different. In these novels, the main characters or protagonists usually find themselves in conflict with the greater world. In an individual versus society conflict, the main character is hated by the government or by other people. He or she is seen as a threat to the routine way of life that people are used to. This scares people. The angry government leaders fight the threat by kidnapping or getting rid of the individual. The dystopian world might also involve an individual in conflict with nature. In such a conflict, the main character is fighting a problem that can't be solved easily. The only foreseeable solution is finding a safe place that provides the necessities of life. In an individual versus self conflict, the protagonist fights, fights the beasts within. This may be a battle with his or her own self-consciousness. Victory can only come by fighting the protagonist's own dysfunctions. This type of conflict is usually not central to a dystopian novel. These books most often deal with outside forces, but a protagonist may have to overcome his or her own flaws. Such flaws are at the heart of inner conflict. Dystopia's conflicts. Dystopian novels have central conflicts that usually fall into one of two main categories. Individual versus society is one. In Cinder by Marissa Meyer, the protagonist is a cyborg. As the book begins, it becomes clear that cyborgs are treated as second-class citizens in this dystopian society. Cinder is a cyborg fighting against her society. Individual versus nature is the other category. In James Dashner's The Scorch Trials, nature causes major problems. A terrible disease and the extraordinary heat of the sun cause the destruction of the modern world. The protagonist, Thomas, fights against natural and human enemies. Elements of dystopian worlds. Throughout young adult dystopian novels, there are recurring core themes and ideas. Name any dystopian novel and you'll find these elements. Fight. The universe is broken. It has been shattered by people who believe in power and control. They are corrupt and evil. A few people fight back. They want to save the destroyed, crumbling society. 
but not always for the same reasons. Survive. Surviving means to live another day and see another sunrise. Protagonists want to survive and they want their friends to survive. Survival is what keeps them fighting against the dystopian world. Protect. The ones they love inspire protagonists to strike back and protect those around them. They fight to keep everyone safe and want their families to live in peace. The world changes because protagonists love their families. Change. Not many people have changed the world or even changed their communities. Changing society is a force that pushes people to greatness. Protagonists want to change society, but they end up changing the world. Love. Love is the most powerful, beautiful force in the universe. Love for family, friends, and others motivates protagonists. They fight back against a world that is anything but perfect. Finish. All these protagonists fight governments that try to keep them in the dark. They discover truths and they fight for many reasons. Above all, they fight for their own dystopias. They fight to end their own dystopias once and for all. This is a roadmap of dystopian society and the plot that usually forms from a dystopia to a new world. World-changing events cause a dystopian society to form. Then the protagonist faces a life-changing moment. And then natural leaders within the community begin to emerge and find support. Next, at a key point in the story, the protagonist realizes that fighting is the only way to create change. The people then join together in rebellion against dystopian forces. And finally, at the end of the story, a new world emerges and life has forever changed. Controlling governments. In many dystopian novels, leaders try to make perfect worlds, but fail. Instead, they create flawed worlds. This often happens because the controlling powers are corrupt. They focus on their own needs and ignore the needs of the masses. There are many different ways governments become corrupt. Some governments are only under the rule of one person who has complete power. Other governments involve a group of villains who work together to gain total control. Controlling governments keep citizens in the dark. The leaders act as if the world is perfect, but it is far from it. These corrupt actions cause people to rebel and the government fights back. This game of cat and mouse creates dystopian worlds. Governments also lie to citizens about the outside world. Dystopian leaders often conceal the truth about conditions on earth. They don't want citizens to realize how harsh nature can be. However, with so many people trapped in small areas, problems spread rapidly. When natural disasters do threaten, people rely on one another to survive. Citizens in these failing worlds are stretched thin. They search for safe places and protection from the elements. Without support from honest leaders, problems arise. Utopian society? Yeah, right. Lois Lowry's The Giver is a perfect example of a dystopia that pretends to be a utopia. The government believes that without color, emotion, and feeling, the world will be a safer place. The leaders think that erasing these things will keep mankind at peace. All it really does is deprive people of key aspects of human life. Governments in popular YAL. Two popular novels show just how far a government will go in a dystopian society. Imagine having to marry someone chosen for you by a computer program. What would happen if there were an error? What if you were accidentally matched to the wrong partner? In Ali Khan's Matched Trilogy, a computer error causes the protagonist to rethink her entire life. She later rebels against her controlling government. In Marie Lu's Legend, the government tests all children. Then the leaders use the results to decide what the children's roles will be in life. The highest scoring children are trained to lead the military. The lowest scoring children are used for medical experience, experiments. But all governments aren't bad. There are some novels that do not have correct governments. Instead, natural disasters cause life to change suddenly. Citizens and governments must work together to fight the elements and survive. In Susan Beth Pfeiffer's Life as We Know It, an asteroid hits the moon. The moon moves closer to Earth. This causes natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunamis, exploding volcanoes, and terrible storms. Survival becomes difficult. In this novel, the government tries to help people. It tries to give the people what they need to survive. Trilogy, trilogy, trilogy. 
Many dystopian trilogies share common storylines. In most cases, the first novel is where the protagonist realizes he or she is living in a corrupt world. In the second novel, the main character takes a journey, goes into hiding, or is thrown into combat. The final novel concludes the story and ends in the resolution or defeat of the conflict or government. That's all we have time to read right now, but I hope you all enjoyed learning about young adult literature and dystopian novels in particular. Dystopian worlds are a very interesting topic and it was so much fun to write this book. I hope you guys can go out and find some great dystopian novels to read. All right, bye.